Hello everyone. Welcome to the project on Spring Boot with AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So let's quickly move on to the agenda of this video. Let's have a look at what we are going to learn in this video. So first of all, we'll be looking at what is Elastic Beanstalk. And after that, we'll be having a look at what are all the things internally happen when we are launching any application on Elastic Beanstalk. And finally, we'll be making a Spring Boot project. It will be a Hello World small application and we'll be using that to deploy on Elastic Beanstalk. All right, so these three things we'll be covering in this video. So let's have a look at what is Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk is a fully managed service provided by AWS that allows you to deploy, manage, and scale your application. It can be web application or it can be any application. All right, so on the AWS, you have one service, you call it Elastic Beanstalk, all right? And you provide any application, whether it's a Python application or it's a Java application or a Spring Boot application, whatever application you have, you just provide the link to your application. And all that it will do is to deploy your application onto AWS Cloud with the required resources. Whatever is required, it will be initializing all those applications it may be a database, it may be a EC2, it, any application that you have mentioned to start, it will be doing that. And by doing so, it will be reducing your all the infrastructure work that you will be doing manually. It will be taking care of all of that, right? So it does capacity provisioning, it can launch up load balancers or auto scaling, all those things are taken care by Elastic Stock, right? So that you can only focus on the business logic. Now let's have a look at what happens internally when you launch up an Elastic Beanstalk application. So let's say you have a Spring Boot application that you want to deploy on the Elastic Beanstalk, right? So internally what happens, it will generate up an environment and in that environment, the Elastic Beanstalk will launch up few of the things. We call it resources of AWS, the EC2, the load balancers, databases for the S3, whatever you have mentioned, it, it will be launching of all those applications internally. So let's say that your code is in Bitbucket or it can be in the GitHub or code commit, right? Your code can be anywhere. So you just provide the URL to the Elastic Beanstalk, all right? By taking the application URL, the Elastic Beanstalk takes that up and makes a Docker image out of it, right? So this Docker, it will containerize it and it will store that image into Elastic Container Registry, right? It can be anywhere, wherever you provide your source that this is the place where I want to store my all the images, it will be storing it there, right? So this container image will be, basically it will be deployed onto Elastic Beanstalk. It will also provision a load balancer for you so that if there is more load coming onto your application, it will distribute the load between your instances, right? So it takes care of load balancing internally. If you have provided any database instance to launch up, maybe it's a DynamoDB or any other database, it will be configuring your application with that. You just need to provide the key and the value pairs in terms of your application properties, like uh, the username, the password. If you don't provide the Elastic Container Registry, it will be storing your images in the S3 bucket. It will also internally start up as three bucket and it will be storing your email there. All right. So these are the things that basically happen when you launch up your application onto Elastic Beanstalk. All right. So let's move to the next one. The prerequisite for this video, I assume that you are already having an AWS account where you can do all the hands on. And I also assume that you have a STS or Eclipse installed in your system. If you don't have, it's not a problem. You can use the jar file to deploy your application. You can get the link of jar file in the description. You have to take that jar file and follow along with this tutorial to deploy your application onto Elastic Beanstalk, all right? Before we move to the next content or the main content, I just want to make an appeal like we do a lots of hard work, research, and it takes lots of patience and time to make a video just like this, right? So all we want is for you to subscribe to this channel so that it will give me more motivation to make more such videos like this and that will add up to your knowledge, right? Also, one more thing, we provide free Udemy coupons to the selected subscribers every month. We select 10 subscribers from our channel and we provide them coupons via email. 
so that you can buy a Udemy course of your choice from its website. To clarify it, it's not a paid promotion. We are doing it just for the purpose of knowledge. All right. So let's quickly jump on to our practical sessions and we'll be making a Spring Boot application and deploying that onto a plastic bean stock. And now we are on to our STS application where we are going to make a Spring Boot application. We will be moving faster through making this application because we don't want to waste more time on it. We want to focus on the main content, right? Uh, you can keep it in name here. The Maven project, the packaging is our language is Java. The Java version is 8. I'm leaving the group as it is, the artifact name as it is. And description, you can keep it any. I'm leaving it blank. And finally, click on next. We are going to use only one dependency that is the Spring Web and click on next. You need to have a working internet connection in order to uh, download all those dependencies. Then only this project will be working. So finish it and our Spring Boot application is launching up. It is just downloading all the required dependencies. All right, so we have our Spring Boot application ready. Let's go and make one more class. And I will see it as a controller class. Click on new and go to class. I will make this in a new package and I will name it as a controller. The class name I will give it hello world controller and click on finish. So we have got this class. In this class, we will name it as a rest controller. And in this class, we will have a get mapping that will be just slash hello and the method name will be public string hello world this will be in the double quotes and will just return a hello world now let me expose one more pain point and that will be the i will give the name as a welcome page and it's a get mapping and we will not give any name to it it will be only uh, ending with the slash and the method name will be public string welcome page and in this case, we will return a string. Okay, so we'll return a hello world. And here we will change the return. This, this is the second phase. Okay, so what we have done, we have exposed two mapping, one with the hello and one with the root mapping that is a slash. And we'll see that in some time why we have done that. So our application is ready. Let me run my application, run it as a Spring Boot app. So my application is started and it is started on port 8080. Okay, now let me go to my browser. Just type localhost colon 8080 and just click enter. It will give me the hello world, right? Now again, if we give it with the slash hello, this is my second page. So this is my two page application and we are ready with the application. But now, in order to deploy our application on AWS Elastic Beanstalk, we need a jar file. We can do it in a two ways. One by putting our code somewhere in a repository and giving the link to our Elastic Beanstalk. Or we can give directly the jar file from our local computer and it will do the rest of the work for us. Right? So, uh, we will just make a jar file first. How do we make a jar file? You have to right click on the project, go to run as. And here it is Maven build, right? So in the goals here, you have to type clean this install, right? And just run it. So it took 17 seconds and our application build is successful. You can find the jar file in the target folder. If you expand the target folder, you can see it here. If you don't see uh, the target folder or if you are not able to expand the target folder, you can just right click and click on refresh and it will update the target folder, right? So we need to go to this location, go to properties and this is the location of the jar file, right? So I will copy this path. It's time for us to deploy our application on AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So for that, we will go to the AWS console. I hope you have already logged into it. Now search for Elastic Beanstalk, right? Click on this Elastic Beanstalk and in here, you will be getting the option to create application. So 
So we are on to create application phase of Elastic Beanstalk, and here we will be naming our app. So let's name it anything you can give Elastic Beanstalk demo. And in the tag names, you can give whatever you want, but it's not required. Now the platform. So platform you have to choose as Java, as this is a Java code. And I will keep the latest version of uh, Coreto with the recommended platform version. And we are going to upload our code from a uh, jar file. So upload your code. We can also uh, provide the link to the source repository. In this example, we will be taking a local file and we'll be uploading that into Plastic Beanstalk, right? So local file, choose the file. And it's in my target folder, right? The jar file. Here it is. Click on open. The file is uploaded successfully. Now we can go ahead and create the application. But it's a good idea to know what, what are the options we have when we are configuring the Elastic Beanstalk, right? So we'll go to configure more options and we will get a lot more options to make changes. The default configuration we can overwrite and we can do many changes in this. So uh, this is a pretty eligible single instance. Uh, the platform is Coreto 17. These are the default settings for the software. If we go and edit here, you will see that Gradle Home M2, Maven Home are already set. If we want, you can give a new uh, parameter or new environment variable that you have. In this case, uh, I will give the server port because uh, the default port for the Elastic Beanstalk application is 5000. And for Tomcat server is 8080. So obviously it will uh, fail somewhere. So it's better to give uh, a server port. Click on save. This is basically the settings of EC2 that you want to launch. This is by default T3 is selected, T3 is small, and TMI ID is also generated, right? If you want, you can make some changes in the instance. For demo purpose, we will not go with that. Now, the load balancer is not configured here. I will do that by going into the capacity edit and we can select from single instance to load balanced and how many instances maximum you want. I want to keep it two for now. If you see here, the processor is x86, recommended is ARM64. If we are selecting this, then our instance will change and that will not be free tier eligible it will be charging you some amount so i will keep it x86 only so t3 and t3 is small will be selected now there are other settings like availability zone you can select you can uh, select the placement and along with that so many parameters are there that you can select okay and uh, this is the load balancer settings we did the rolling update and deployment is disabled security group it will be automatically launched these will be the security group that will be launched and for monitoring you can enable some of the parameters you can do these settings after launching the instance as well okay and database if you have in your application you can uh, edit it here and you can give all the database related information in here i don't have a database so i will just go ahead and create the application It will open up a terminal and it will be giving you all the logs like what is happening. It is uh, taking the image and placing it into a S3 bucket. If you want, you can go and see the S3 bucket as well. Here, uh, my resources and the jar files will be placed. These are some old jar files. The latest one will be placed here itself. This is the latest one. creating a security group and it will also launch up the EC2 instance if you want you can go and see EC2 instance as well so currently uh, this is the instance that is getting initiated it is currently initializing so once it is initialized our plastic beanstalk application will be up it has also created a security alarm. Keep a watch out on the alarm because we are creating the application. If you have not disabled the alarm and if something happens to the application, the alarm will be generated. 
and AWS charges a lot for the alarms. It's always better to delete the resources that you have created after you have learned the subject, right? So instance deployment completed successfully. We can see that in the EC2, uh, I think it will take some more time. It is still in the initializing when it will be done. It will be two by two status check passed. So once all the initialization are completed, your console will look something like this, where it will be giving the health check status. And currently it is okay. If it is uh, degraded or warning, then there might be some problem. You can always go ahead and uh, check in the logs or recent events in here and it will give you the information what are the problem that happened, right? So uh, this is the URL that is be used for uh, launching your application. If I click on this one, it will give me the default page that we configured, right? And the second page that we configured was slash hello. This is my second page, right? So this is how we configure the Elastic Beanstalk. Now, when you are learning any application of AWS, it's always a good idea to go through all the resources that it has to offer, like all the options that it has in the left-hand side. If you go through all the options, you will be knowing a lot more about the service and you can very well be familiar with the service, right? So if you go to the configuration, you will be seeing a lot of configuration are in place here and you can change whatever you want from here, right? The software where we changed the server port that you can see here, right? And uh, the instance type and the capacity, everything is here. So if you want to make any change in all of this, uh, you can very well go ahead and do that. If you go to the environment again and you can, if you have the next version of your JAR application, can, you can again go and deploy that by this option, right? You can view the logs, the health of the application. You can also do the monitoring where it will be showing you performance and the CPU utilization, the uh, number of requests and everything you will be getting it here. So uh, I hope this gives you an overview of how you can deploy your application onto Elastic Beanstalk. And if you have any questions or any doubt, you can write it in the comment section. I will be very happy to serve you or to answer to your questions or to make a new videos on your request. With that, I just want to make an appeal. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. That will give me a moral boost to make such videos like that. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.